Hello and welcome to our millions of viewers here in Nigeria and all around the world. This is Firecrackers where we take time to discuss issues of national interest. We also get to engage the major players. I am Kelly Egiga. Tonight we will begin with international politics as nearly 160 House of Representatives sign on bail as Democrats plan to introduce article of impeachment against President Donald Trump for his role in Wednesday's invasion of the U.S. Capitol. Now, this is coming just 10 days to the inauguration of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as president and vice president, respectively. We get some perspective from Texas in the United States of America, and also in Dublin, Ireland, and here in Nigeria, where a Trumpist also joins us tonight. Plus, on the program, as the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 considers a fresh lockdown here in Nigeria again, if COVID cases rise, what exactly is the fate of businesses in Nigeria? We get some perspective tonight from Uyo, the Aquarium State Capital. This is Firecrackers and we're live from our studios here in Lagos, Nigeria. Let's get things started. election but we can't play into the hands of these people we have to have peace so go home we love you you're very special Welcome back. This is Firecrackers and we're live from our studios here in Lagos, Nigeria. I am Kelly Egiga and I understand that Dr. G.D. Johnson is standing by here in Lagos. Uh, he's a former deputy provost of the Nigerian Institute of Journalists. He joins us live via Zoom. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us tonight. I, I, I may be right if I decide to call you a Trumpist, Dr. G.D. So that does not make me that does not make me to be a Trumpist and, and that I have mm. an alternative view and that I do not share the values of uh, the progressive All right. ideology does not make me a Trumpist. So we, of us we, are, we, our we, we will get we will get into that argument. The world is Dr. Just the is made of people Do, Dr. Jude, if, if you can hear me just a moment, uh, Dr. Jude, if you can hear me just a moment, we will get into that argument uh, very, very quickly. Uh, because just before the elections, I remember you were on the show. We will talk about some of the things that played out uh, just before the elections, the U.S. elections, I mean. But also joining us uh, via Zoom uh, tonight is an international affairs analyst, uh, live from Texas in the U.S., uh, Sumtu Ochuku I.K. Ejiofo. She also joins us live uh, via Zoom. Sumtu, good to see you again. Good morning, Kelly. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Well, I wish you the same. Uh, it's morning over there in the U.S., but well, it's evening here. Uh, also joining oh, I'm us, sorry. Uh, I forgot about the time difference. There <laughs> the is a time, time difference. difference. <laughs> All right, sometimes we totally understand. Well, thank you so much uh, for staying up for the program tonight. Um, we also have joining us uh, via Zoom as well, a freelance journalist, uh, my colleague, my brother and friend, uh, Joseph Oko, live in Dublin, uh, Ireland. Joseph, we'd like to thank you most kindly for agreeing to speak with Galaxy TV, Joseph. Yeah, hi, Kelly. It's good to be here. Happy New Year to you and Happy New Year to your viewers. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, gentlemen and lady. 
let's get things started tonight. Um, I'm tempted to almost go to a quote uh, made by Donald Trump, but let's begin this conversation here in Lagos where Dr. DJ, GD uh, Johnson joins us. Uh, Dr. GD, let's begin with you. Um, just before the elections, we had a chat on this program and uh, you had made projections and predictions that Donald Trump was going to win. He eventually did not win. Are you, do you, are you of the school of thoughts that uh, believe that the elections were rigged just as Donald Trump? Elections are meant to be won and to be lost. Um, in 2016, a lot of pundits made predictions that Donald Trump would lose the election. 95, 90, he had 5% chance of winning the election. He won the election in, in, in 2015 and the election was contested even up to last mm. year. So basically, when it comes to election, it's the outcome of the election. It's the electorate that determines the outcome of the election. Pundits can only come up with their own projections as regards what the outcome of the election would be, but ultimately the, it lies with the electorate to decide who wins the election. So the American electorate has taken a decision as regards who they want to be their president for the next for the next four years. So it has nothing to do. Hmm. All right, Dr. Jide, um, it no appears like projections for the outcome of. Hmm. All right, Dr. Jide, I'm, I'm tempted to uh, make reference to. Uh, the People's Magazine of 1998, where President Donald Trump was quoted as saying, if I were to run, I would run as a Republican. There are the dumpest group of voters in the country that believe anything on Fox News. I could lie and they would still eat it up. I bet my numbers would be terrific. Uh, do you think that is probably the reason why we saw the attacks and siege on, on Capitol on Wednesday? Well, um, uh, the, what happened on Wednesday is nothing new. If, and so it's not news. Um, this election has, this election opened our eyes to a lot of things that happened in the United States of America. For the very first time, 17 attorney general of 17 states approached the Supreme Court to challenge the outcome of the elections. We've seen the outcome of the elections being challenged. And prior to what happened on Wednesday, the house of Mitch, Mc, Mitch McConnell, this, the, the Senate majority leader was was attacked. The house of Nancy, the house of Nancy Pelosi, the, the speaker of the house of was 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 attacked. So the tension has been building up prior to what happened on on Wednesday. And the, the security agencies in America and if the other institutions have done what they need to do, uh, the the likely outcome of what we saw on Wednesday shouldn't have happened. To so those that is new to it becomes news to some of us that is not new to it is not news because if you look at um the build up towards towards wednesday we shouldn't be surprised that we eventually saw what really happened concerning that. and like typical politicians for the very first time that the political class the elites were affected directly by the protests and actions of some certain group that has dissatisfied satisfied with what is happening in the society there was an outreach now we all yeah. watched throughout summer when businesses of people were threatened there was no outreach on the house of breath there was no outreach from the senate we saw how in kenosha in in Auckland, in 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 portland in oregon in atlanta where lives and property were lost as a result of the black lives movement which i share some value of of the movement there was no outreach but for the very first time when the livelihood of the political class was threatened mm. we saw the outreach so for some of us it's not it's, it's nothing it's nothing new because this has uh, been right. building up over time mm. and so yes dr doc, dr dr johnson so dr johnson doc, dr johnson we will come to that uh, in terms yeah. of why the security agents uh, agencies in the u.s did not pay attention to some of the warnings I'm also going to come to you on the fact that if Donald Trump should take responsibility for what played out on Wednesday. Well, let's take this conversation now to Texas, where Somto uh, Ochiku is standing by. Somto, uh, how would you respond to some of the thoughts of uh, Dr. Jide Johnson here in Lagos, uh, Nigeria? He says that this is not new in uh, the history of America. Now, I remember that something like this played out, I think, in 18. Uh, 14, according to history, but I'm not too sure now. But Somto, how, how would you respond to the event of Wednesday? 
Yes, the events on Wednesday were very terrible. An attack on public servants should never happen. Um, Professor, I kind of do not agree with you about it not being news. It is news in the sense that the handling of the situation was not was not up to par. Let's let's call it what it is. If you were people of color, there were black people protesting. There will be bodies right now. I would be crying on the street. I would be in, in shock. So the handling of the situation is what is news. It's not that we're, we're not shocked that a bunch of Trumpists and the MAGA situation came to the Capitol. I'm not shocked about it. We've been, we the pundits have been saying this forever. We've been talking about, you know, the threats they've been posting on Parler. I actually went on Parler in February. I've been on Parler since February. I've seen all the threats, all the talk, all the, everything they've been posting. Even people who were verified also post this information that are false. So yes, the build up has been there, but I just I disagree with the fact that it's not news. It is news to people. This is the United States of America. Things like this should never happen, honestly. Mm. So yes, it was news. It was very shocking because it was like what two to three three hours of the capital was under siege. The United States Capitol that has happened since the English um, attacked the capital. And the, to make matters mm. worse, why it's really bad is because people brought the Confederate flag. To the Capitol. The Confederate flag hasn't been on the Capitol ever. So yes, it is news. It's a big deal. It's very terrible. Mm. We need to talk about All right. it. Mm. Exactly. It's not, we're not shocked. People of color are not shocked. I wasn't shocked. I just stood there watching it. I was I was like, this is the result of the falsehoods and the lies they've been telling them all summer, you know? But it's it's still news. It's it's something we really need to talk about. All right, all right, Somto, let's stay with you for a moment. Uh, but since you're in the U.S., um, I'm just wondering how the security agencies, uh, I mean, the best in the world missed the signs. It appears the signs were there, uh, the, the signs of these attacks and, um, and, and the warnings. How come they were ignored? Okay, so it's complicated. So this, this is... I'm from my own personal analysis of the situation. So in the summer, there was a strict difference, a stark difference between the way they responded with the Black Lives Matter versus the way they responded with the MAGA terrorists. So in the Black Lives Matter movement, there were the um, people, um, military personnel agencies on the ground at the Capitol, guarding the Capitol. I just, I still don't understand how there was no, there were no agencies on ground up until later on when they came in. I, I know okay. that the mayor of DC, Mayor Bowser, did ask for the National Guard to come in. And many of the conservative uh, people were talking about, why is she doing that? Why did she do that for Black Lives Matter? She was being prepared. She knew what was going to happen. She did a, ask for the National Guard. She did the best she could. But there were, she didn't even get a response on, up until the siege happened. Mm -hmm. And then the people from Virginia, the governor sent a, um, assistance from Virginia, Maryland, DC Metro Police, and then the Capitol Police increased presence, and then they came came to the to the Capitol. So yes, it was. Mm -hmm. I, 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 someone has to answer for that. Someone, someone mm -hmm. on the top level of affairs. All right. Someone has to answer for that. I think they assumed that, given the fact that the vice president was there. The speaker, given the fact that technically the government was on the Capitol, nothing like that would happen. That's what I'm thinking. They all thought it's it's never gonna happen. It was just they all thought it was just talk. That, yeah. That's the way I see it. Because if not, I mean, my Vice President Pence was there. That's what's crazy. Also, Vice President elect Kamala Harris was also present. So I I I I'm I'm shocked. I'm actually really angry about the situation. Because now I worry, what's going to happen to all the other public servants? What's going to happen to when people get elected? Because guess what? I could have been at the Capitol because I, t I took a state job. I could have been at the Capitol in DC, but I took a state job. That's why I'm in, I'm in Texas. So it is, it is scary. It is a little very scary for us right now. And those of us who are very big into, into politics, but yeah, it is, it is, someone has to answer for it. Um, they're looking into investigating the Secret Service, right. the Capitol Police, and, and you know, people in the different agencies. The FBI has actually made a lot of arrests. I'm very. Oh, all right, uh, so, 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 so
Yeah, uh, uh, so to just a moment, uh, because I understand that Joseph Oko is also joins us live now from uh, Dublin, uh, Ireland. Joseph, uh, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with Galaxy TV. Just before we take a breather on the conversation, gentlemen and lady, uh, uh, Joseph, in, in, in Ireland now, uh, how would you respond to Wednesday's attacks uh, on, 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 on the, the capital? And then, of course, uh, just how much damage do you think has been done to America's democracy, Joseph? Yeah, it was really shocking to see uh, what's happened in America. I mean, America, you know, everyone knows how organized they are. Some things like this usually don't happen. In fact, it's even a benchmark to other democracies in the world. Mm. But um, people should have expected this, really, because um, Trump has been showing to the world that he's not a man of peace. He has been riding violence amongst um, his supporters. He pushed this, and uh, I think. Americans who have been, you know, keeping quiet for so long, they kind of deserve this because so many people who should have been calling Trump out, especially the Republican members who um, should have um, been telling Trump that some of the things he's been doing are not, you know, democratic. They kept quiet all the while. And um, now that um, the whole thing has been to this extent, I think um, um, there's a reason why we begin to see some um, Republicans who've supported Trump, they've been as, um, loyalists for so long, they are beginning to um, think twice about um, some of the things, um, the actions Trump has been doing in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So um, on hearing the news about the invasion, I was, you know, disappointed but not really surprised because of all the rhetorics Trump has, you know, been involving himself with in the past couple of years. And um, I think now that, um, you know, we've seen lives being lost, now that um, the whole situation has escalated to this extent, I think um, legal process needs to be taken beyond mm -hmm. the uh, impeachment plots that um, mm -hmm. are making the waves right now. All right, Joseph, uh, when we come back after the break, let's take a breather. When we come back, we will explore the, 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 the legal angle to all of this and if President Donald Trump uh, should be made to pay, as we understand about 160 uh, uh, House of Representatives, Democrats to be precise, um, are already planning to introduce articles of impeachment on Monday. We will find out how all of this is going to play out in the coming 24 hours. But that's in a moment, guys. This is Firecrackers. We are back in just a moment. Join us again. election but we can't play into the hands of these people we have to have peace so go home we love you you're very special Thank you for staying with us. This is Firecrackers and we're live from our studios here in Lagos, Nigeria as we consider events of Wednesday in the U.S. Uh, where uh, it appears that there was a very, very serious attack and siege. Let's get some perspective, uh, of course, from our guests uh, here in Lagos. We have Dr. Jide Johnson, uh, the former Deputy Provost of the NIJ in Dublin, Ireland. We have Joseph Oko standing by as well to speak with us, a freelance journalist. And of course, uh, in Texas, in the U.S., some to at Geofo, IQ Geofo is also standing by to speak with us, an international affairs analyst. Gentlemen and lady, uh, let's get uh, to the conversation as we begin to wind down on this particular topic. Let's, let's begin here in Lagos, uh, Dr. Gide, where you are. As, as it stands right now, um, uh, Twitter has finally suspended Mr. Trump permanently. Uh, so. As it stands right now, he's uh, been suspended from Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. 
Is uh, President Trump on isolation? And say that they've done the right thing, like most people have said. But no matter how, um, the beauty of democracy is that majority will have their way, the minority will have their say. Any form of censorship against free speech should be condemned in its totality. And then don't forget until until noon, January 20th, Donald Trump is still the president of the United States of America. Now, if that could be done to Donald Trump, the president of the United States of America, what could be done to you and I um, tomorrow when uh, work will be done to you and I tomorrow by by this um, social media company concerning stifling um, free speech. As far as I am concerned, now you, you might disagree. It's, yeah, any form of censorship, as 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 a journalist, any form of censorship, I'm totally I'm totally against it. Depends depending on the way you are free you are framing it to to be. Anybody can wake up tomorrow and. Um, say okay you know we are going to censor this particular group of of people the beauty of democracy is this let the majority have their way and the minority will have their say so i'm totally against any form of censorship and like i said he's still the president until until on the january until noon january 20th um 2021 so that's that's my view concerning um all right Twitter, Facebook, and the rest of it mm. being that censorship. Uh, uh, Somebody can wake Dr. up tomorrow and say, you know what, I'm coming to your side up. Okay. I wake up, you know what, okay. Dallas, because of what you have done, we are censoring you, we are taking you up the air. Taking away somebody's voice like taking life out of it. It is not everything that we see. You are telling people that they can't take decision for themselves. You and I know that quite all like that. Whatever anybody says, you should be able to separate the truth from people can take informed decision themselves. It should not be left right. in the hand of one private company or one individual to determine what must be mm. had by populists. That's my view. All right. Uh, I Dr. Jide, I, 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 disagree. I, I actually disagree with Jide as well. Thank you. Thank all you right, very much. All right. All right. Okay, Just let's, let's, go I'm ahead. Gonna begin with, I'm sorry. I'm going to begin with the fact that I'm a big Twitter head, okay? I, I live on Twitter to start with. First of all, no one is censoring Donald Trump. Professor, you know better than to say that. First of all, there are four official government accounts. There is POTUS, FLORUS, VP, and Second Lady. If the, government, if the President of the United States wants to talk to us citizens, he has the press room. He has four other government accounts. What was suspended was Donald Trump's personal account. There are laws for this. You're not supposed to use your personal account for government business. When I do run for office, Sento is going to have a personal account and an official government account. The presidency of, the, of Nigeria has their own accounts. President Buhari also has his personal account. The problem is that Donald Trump merged that and started using personal account for official business. I applaud Cousin Jack in every way what he did. What Donald Trump did incited a siege on the Capitol. What are we talking about here? That's not censorship. First of all, mm. if you guys want to keep saying let's remove Donald Trump, let's actually do that. Did you know that Facebook removed Milo? Milo used to incite violence. Actually, there was a huge protest and violence when you went to California, University of California. They had to well, what, what, has, what has Facebook done to Ayatollah? What has Facebook done to, to, the, to the Chinese Communist Party? What has oh, Facebook done to that? Uh, so basically, if the rules should be applied accordingly if you want to apply the rule the rule should be applied accordingly are you getting my right, point uh, doctor, i doctor am Jude, not in stop doctor Jude, not, the uh, rule should be applied Jude. accordingly are you uh, that, doctor that's Jude my and Sonto, doctor uh, Jude and Sonto, this, just, just a moment just, just a moment guys um, just a moment guys um, um yes joseph let, let's say your views on uh trump suspension from twitter facebook snapchat go ahead yeah joseph. yeah like i said before like i said before i disagree with the professor um, there's a difference between um, free speech and when you begin to incite violence. First of all, we have to, we actually have to understand that Twitter, for example, is a private business, yeah? And wow. these people run their business in such a way, according to certain rules and certain standards. Donald Trump was once, not once, not twice, not thrice. He's been warned. Many of the messages he put up on Twitter, they've all been flagged. So he was, you know, actually uh, violating the rules of, um, of, of these means of engagement. And that's why um, they took his account down and deservedly so. So when people say um, 
we're trying to impede free speech by uh, taking people off Twitter or social media account. It's not right because um, you have to subscribe to certain laws and certain standards of whatever social media accounts mm -hmm. you, you belong to. And it's in no way um, uh, uh, impeding, impeding the, the First Amendment, which many Americans you know, are talking about because the First Amendment... Joseph, can I ask you a question? How yeah. did the media evolve over time? The media uh, uh, itself. Just, just, gentlemen, gentlemen, media, and lady, gentlemen and lady, just, just a moment, just a moment. That leads me to my next question. Dr. Julie, let's begin with you. Should Donald Trump be held responsible for what played out in Capitol Hill on Wednesday? Oh, well, there's no way you can put every politician. If you analyze, if you do a content analysis, every politician every every from nigeria to america if you do an analysis of it when they appeal to their voters you might call it campaign rhetoric it's but incitement every political class engage in one form of incitement or the other no that's that's no no that's, 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 that's right. every listen that every right. no every politicians use rhetorics rhetorics that in content analysis you could analyze to be an incitement. Every, every political class. You could do. You could do a study on that. However, talking about the issue that happened on Wednesday, I said it's a failure of a system. Every system benefits from negative feedback, from negentropy. Now, Stonto said something. The vice president of the United States of America was in the Capitol. The the press, the vice president elect was there. The Senate majority leader was there. All the senators were there. Where is FBI? Where is CIA? How come that the whole of America was in that building and that building was penetrated? There are questions to be asked beyond the rhetorics of Donald Trump, which I do not approve of. Beyond the rhetorics, which I do not mm. approve of, how come was the capital breached? How? Mm. That I've not been able to, to wrap around my head. Because you have a, I can't imagine the vice president of Nigeria and the Senate president of Nigeria and the president in left of Nigeria being in one building and that building will be breached by civilians. Is it Dr. Jide? Dr. Jide, my just a moment. Just a moment, guys. Just a moment, guys. Just a moment, Joseph. Just a moment, Joseph. Just a moment. Uh, my, my question, my question, Dr. Jide, I, I would want to take this back to you. Should Donald Trump be held responsible for the events that played out on Wednesday? Dr. Jide, just uh, a moment with you. Should he be, should he be read? Should he be we held responsible? We have a typical example in Nigeria. In 2015, Jonathan was demonized as regards the 20, what is playing out in America has already played out in Nigeria in 2015. Played out in 2015 election. So there's what is called history repeat itself syndrome in history. So what is playing is not it's not it's not in new. Did Donald Trump go to the building? He, he, he gave a speech, no doubt about that. All right. Then he came out and he asked people to go back home, and they said they are going to impeach him. And people are talking about insurrection. It's about framing. He's still the president of United States of America till 12 noon. Can you right, carry out an insurrection right. against thank, your own thank government? Thank you so much, Dr. Jizel. It's not about media uh, framing, and Dr. the way the Jizel. media frame the issue, and everybody yes. takes well, the narrative from there, and we keep talking about it. Insurrection. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let, let's take this conversation now to Dublin. Joseph, uh, should Donald Trump be held responsible for the actions on Wednesday, especially now that the Democrats are striving to ensure that he's impeached for the second time? Joseph? Absolutely, absolutely. Donald Trump should be held responsible for what happens. He's a man of power. He's the president of the United States. And every word the president says has power. You saw you. how, yeah, you saw what he was saying uh, a few hours to when the event happened, when he was addressing the crowd. And he has also mentioned in the past that his um, people are going to march on his behalf to the Capitol to cause um, uh, uh, chaos. And that's exactly what happened. So if the president can say that and that happens, you, you, you definitely will have to connect the statement and the action. So I believe that Donald Trump should have been cautious in his utterances. I also believe that um, some of um, the uh, police officers 
in the capital that day should be held culpable because I believe that um, the United States, is, they have um, uh, this sophisticated system wherein um, people can't just impede or, 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 or kind of um, 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 get into um, such a secure building, one of the uh, most right. secure in America. So I think All investigation right. should be launched, apart from the obvious, which is um, Donald Trump's utterances. Another investigation that should be launched is um, to what extent um, the um, police officers around, you know, uh, were culpable in this um, 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 issue we're talking about. All right. Sonto, uh, should uh, yes. Mr. Trump be penalized? Should he be held responsible? I understand that the death toll of COVID-19 in the U.S. hit about 370,119 uh, just yesterday. And, of course, we saw large crowds or crowds in their numbers at the Capitol on Wednesday. A chunk of them without face masks or adhering to the COVID guidelines and all of that. Should Mr. Trump be held responsible? Should he be impeached? And the other part of the question is, do you think that the Democrats can see this through in the next 10 days? Okay, so should Donald Trump be held responsible? Yes, yes, and yes. I can name five people who should also be responsible. Ted Cruz, Holly, Louis Gromay, um, many Texas representatives that have signed on to this. Should um, he be impeached? Yes, he should. And he should be barred from ever holding federal elected, public, publicly elected office ever again. One, that would save the Republicans a lot of time, energy, and political capital. Also, the next answer to your question, should he be held responsible for if people have COVID-related deaths? COVID is not Donald Trump's fault, right? But the way he handled it is his fault. Like Joseph said, what a president says has power. Let's be honest. All right. That's why when Obama said something, he made sure he said something great. He made sure he said mm. he, lead, he led very well because he knows whatever he had to say has power. Now, right. back to what uh, the professor so, so, was saying about campaign rhetoric. Uh, oh, so, come so, on, so, professor. You're not better than to say that. That was not campaign rhetoric. That was a so, 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 just a moment. For instance, during so, the debate. Just a moment. Ju just a moment, Sumto. I've been told that this Zoom meeting expires in the next three minutes or less. So, what are your final thoughts? And uh, what lessons can Nigeria, a country that turns 61 or 62 this year, 2021, learn from what played out on Wednesday? In 30 seconds, please. Yes, please do not use false information when you're campaigning. Use accurate information. That's one thing. Secondly, when you're listening to people campaign, make sure the person has good policies so that when you vote right. for them, you vote for a good person. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sumto. Uh, Joseph in Dublin, uh, what lessons can Nigeria learn from the events that played out on Wednesday? In 30 seconds, please, or less. Yeah, if you're in position of power, you should be accountable in your words, in your actions. Do not incite violence because definitely people are watching and people can actually um, actualize certain things you say that you feel do not hold um, um, any weight. So it's good to be careful being in a position of power. Remember that you're also in a position of influence and it can go either way, good or bad. Thank you so much, uh, Joseph, uh, for us then, Dublin. Uh, and then, Dr. Gide here in Lagos, uh, what are your final or concluding thoughts uh, on this and the lessons Nigeria can learn? Just read just Shakespeare's Julius Caesar and Macbeth. And then, you know, politics is about game of interest. What happened in America will still happen somewhere in the world. And 200 years from now, the same thing will still repeat itself. Politicians are busy, whether they are in America or in Nigeria. Democracy is the battle for survival among political mm. parties and people with political interest. They don't care about those. Doctor, they don't care about their interests. Do, Dr. Gide. They try to mm. sort themselves out. Dr. Gide Johnson, uh, live from Lagos, Nigeria. I would like to thank you, former Deputy Provost of the Nigerian Institute of Journalists. Thank you so much for joining us tonight uh, on the program. Also pleasure. live, uh, joining us uh, uh, from Dublin, Ireland, a freelance journalist, Joseph Oko. Thank you so much for joining us on the program tonight. And of course, uh, from, yeah, and of course from Texas in the U.S., uh, an international affairs analyst, Sumto Ochiku, IK Jofo. I'd like to thank you most kindly for your thoughts and thank your you views. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Firecrackers. We are back in just a moment as we shift focus to Nigeria fully. Uh, the PTF, the Presidential Tax Force, says that uh, 
the country is considering another fresh lockdown we consider the fate of businesses and jobs in nigeria in just a moment in the face of the covid 19 pandemic stay with us we'll be right back 